I have beef with the stigma against prunes. And so whatever has brought people from point A, seeing this really delicious, excellent fruit, to point B, judging it as a weird snack for old people, that journey is a problem. Prunes. You know them, you probably don't love them, and that's probably because you haven't tried one in recent memory. A prune is just a really juicy Italian plum that's been dried. We have a weird association with them as a healthy digestive food, and it does help with digestion because it's fiber, but it's also really, really delicious. So I'm here today to show you how to turn prunes into an exceptionally spiced, sweet, and delicious prune pudding that can be eaten on its own or be used as a spread or a fruit filling or a topping for anything from pancakes to biscuits. Before we go any further, be sure to like and subscribe below so you don't miss any videos like this in the future. And if you make it, please let us know. We would love to see how you use it. What we wanna to do to make the prunes a little easier to work with is rehydrate them. So the first step in the recipe is taking your one cup of prunes and adding two cups of just boiled water. This hot water seeps into the fruit and actually encourages it to swell. And so a prune that looks like this becomes much more thick and full and juicy and will break down a lot easier on the stovetop. So I have my one cup of prunes here that I've hydrated with two cups of water and I'm gonna put them in my saucepan and we're gonna put it on top of the heat. I'm gonna bring this to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer and let it simmer for eight minutes until the prunes have started to break down. It's been eight minutes on the stovetop and the prunes are nice and big, swollen from the water and the heat. Uh, some of them have already started to break down. And I'm going to transfer this into a food processor with an additional cup of hot water. Uh, and I'm gonna pulse it about five to eight times. You don't want the mixture to be perfectly smooth because you still want some hunks of the plum suspended in the pudding. We're just blitzing it uh, a few times to break it down a little bit. All right, I'm gonna transfer this back into my saucepan. Now is the time for the fun part. We're gonna both spice, sweeten, and thicken this mixture to make a pudding that's really aromatic and juicy and unique in flavor, but that's also cool and sweet and everything you would expect from a fruit pudding. So the first thing we need to do is remove a third a cup of this mixture and add it to a separate bowl. This third a cup I'm gonna use to make my cornstarch slurry. And what that means is we combine the cornstarch with a small amount of liquid so that we can get all of the lumps of the cornstarch out first before adding it to the pot that we're gonna thicken. The reason you do that is that if you add the cornstarch to the pot with all of the mixture in it, you're gonna get little pockets of cornstarch that gel and are dry in the middle. And so you'll get these really unpleasant lumps of cornstarch all throughout your pudding. Making a slurry ensures that that doesn't happen. So this is a really important step, don't skip it. In addition to the third cup of prunes that I've put in this bowl, I'm also gonna add the juice of one whole lemon. This does a couple things. It helps the cornstarch dissolve, but it also adds a really important acidic component to an otherwise really sweet and spiced pudding. It balances the flavors out really nice and uh, it also helps you taste the unique flavor of the prune by brightening it up. I'm just gonna stir my lemon juice and my prune mixture together. And now that this is combined, it's nice and thin and we can dissolve the cornstarch into this liquid mixture. So I have three tablespoons of cornstarch here that I'm gonna add right in and stir until there are no lumps remaining. Cornstarch or any starch is really one of the coolest kitchen ingredients you can work with because what's happening at a microscopic level is the dissolved starch as it heats on the stove each of those starch molecules starts to swell and they trap water molecules in the suspension. And so that's what transforms a really liquidy mixture into something that's thicker, like a pudding. The starch molecules are creating this suspension of different groups of molecules, leading to something that in your mouth just tastes like a velvety smooth and perfectly thick. So 
you're kind of a scientist when you're using cornstarch in your kitchen. Um, and I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm setting my cornstarch mixture aside into my pot with my remaining prunes. I'm going to add two thirds of a cup of granulated sugar. And then I'm gonna add my secret spices. I developed this recipe and I think that this flavor combination is perfect for the natural juicy syrupy sweetness of dried plums. Those three ingredients are cinnamon, cardamom, and star anise. It's important as you're putting this in to remember <laughs> that we're gonna actually remove the star anise at the end of the process. This is just a woody spice that as it heats and is exposed to the liquid in the mixture will lend flavor, but you don't wanna consume this because it would be like trying to eat a very, very intensely spiced bark. <laughs> so to my pot, I'm going to be adding a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of ground cardamom, and one star anise. All right, and just stir to combine. Now we're gonna add our saucepan with the prunes and the spices and the sugar back to the heat and bring it up to a boil and let it simmer for another five minutes. This gives all of the spices the time to kind of flavor everything. It also gives the sugar time to fully dissolve. And once all of that has happened, we're going to add our cornstarch mixture and thicken our pudding. You'll notice that the cornstarch mixture lightens the color, but as it cooks, that white color is gonna go away. You just wanna make sure that you keep stirring as it's heating so that none of it burns and sticks to the bottom of the pot. All right, my prune pudding is off the heat. I removed my star anise from the mixture because nobody wants to chomp down on that. And as I'm stirring it, I'm noticing one, how shiny it is, and that's from the sugar in the mixture. I'm also noticing that the steam that's coming off of the prune pudding is carrying with it the rich aromatics of cinnamon, cardamom, and star anise which if you're wondering, star anise is in the licorice family. Don't let that scare you away. I know that that's a pretty polarizing flavor subject, but when licorice or anise is paired with other flavors like cinnamon and cardamom, especially with this large of a quantity of those spices, it mutes the overpowering effect of licorice. And so you're not gonna taste this and immediately think of that characteristic flavor. Instead, it kind of acts as like a supporting actor to the other flavors that are kind of standing forward. So I'm just gonna set it aside to cool a little bit. I'm gonna try some. I'm thinking I might put it on some toast. But know that this mixture is just as versatile as any other fruit spread that you can think of. I like to think of using prune pudding the same way I would think about using apple butter. So I'm gonna set this aside to cool and give it a try in a sec. Let's give it a try. This is like a symphony on buttered toast. So much going on. It's juicy and sweet, but all of those flavors and the spices and the lemon juice and the syrupiness of the prune are just harmonizing in a way that like, I just like, I would eat this every day. There's no doubt I would eat this every day. I want to put it in a ham pie. I want to eat it with a slice of cheesecake. I want to have it with a biscuit with some friends. You know, it is like, it is just an exceptional spread. And I think the average person would be utterly shocked to find out that this is made out of prunes. This is a recipe you absolutely have to try. It's so delicious. It's good for you in that you're consuming whole fruits. And quite frankly, it gives apple butter a run for its money. It's really good. <laughs> mm, yeah. You have to make this. <laughs> it's really, really good. 